Okay, differentiation. Once again, just look here. We learned in our regular class about all these things from differentiation. First principles method or definition method to find the derivative of a function. Algebra of differentiation to find the derivative. Chain rule that means differentiation for the composite functions. Logarithmic differentiation we learned. Parametric differentiation, implicit differentiation, and differentiation of one function with respect to the other, as well trigonometric substitutions along with the higher order derivatives. Okay, we learned all these ideas, concepts from differentiation. Okay, these are different methods of differentiation. I am going to give you few simple examples related to all these things. Okay, first of all, just think about this first principles method. Okay, see what is this first principles method. Usually, we develop the concept of derivative just from limits, right? So, just I am giving the idea f dash of x is simply nothing but limit. See, x tending to a, you may say, say like that f dash of x is simply limit x tending to a f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a. Okay f dash of x is this limit extending to a f of x minus f of a by x minus a difference of f and the denominator difference of that x and a okay so or you may say it as f dash of a maybe right so this is the first principles method finding derivative using this idea of limit is mentioned as the definition method or first principles method and sometimes you will have problems related to this okay yeah First of all, suppose if you, if you if anybody asks you to find, I have a function f of x is equals to x cube. Okay, then what is the value of limit? I am just giving you the simple examples related to all these things. Okay, so f of limit extending to four f of x minus f of four divided by x minus four. What is your answer? See, f of x is given as x cube. And limit extending to 4, f of x minus f of 4 by x minus 4 is to find. This is just f dash of 4 just by the definition of derivative by the first principles method. Okay, just from the limits. So f dash of 4. See, f of x is this x cube, right? And was it the derivative? 3x square. See, the derivative of f is 3x square. We know at 4 we need to find. So that is nothing but 3 into 4 square, which is 48, there is the problem. Okay, once again, just have a look. f dash of a is equals to limit extending to a f of x minus f of a by x minus a is the definition of the derivative of f of x and x is equals to a. Right? Now, if anybody asks you to find limit extending to 4 f of x minus f of 4 by x minus 4 for f of x is equals to x cube. Here, just I used the function x cube. If the function is cos x, then here you need to find f dash of 4. That means the derivative of cos x is minus sin x, right? So the answer will become minus sin 4. Okay, right. So here the function is f x cube. See, if you need to find this value, which is from the idea of differentiation, it can be written as f dash of 4. That means derivative of f at 4, which gives us 3 into 4 square, and that is 48. Okay, usually you face these type of problems from this first principles method or definition method. Okay, have a look. I will give you simple examples for every uh, idea of these methods. Okay, have a look. Okay, so first principles method is clear. Then coming to the algebra of differentiation. See, algebra of differentiation is means different derivative for the sum of functions, derivative for the product of functions, derivative for the division of functions. First, I will mention the formulas and then I will give you few simple, uh, see one or two simple examples also. I think you all know that d by dx of f plus g or you may say f minus g. d by dx of the sum of the functions is nothing but derivative of f with respect to x plus derivative of g with respect to x. So f and g are two different functions. d by dx of sum of those two functions is nothing but, see just derivative of first function plus derivative of second function. Whereas coming to the product, d by dx of f into g, if you need to find for a product of functions, what's the derivative? See, you need to follow this thing. First function, f into derivative of g with respect to x. That means derivative of second function. Plus second function, g into derivative of first function, f 
with respect to x that is dy dx of f into z for product okay once again for product of functions if you have two functions in this product first function into the derivative of second plus second function into the derivative of first and then what you say about the dy dx of f by g division of functions numerator by denominator format we did many problems using all these things okay already but as a part of revision i am just giving you all these ideas once again see numerator by denominator what is its answer denominator g into the derivative of numerator df by dx minus numerator f into derivative of denominator dg by dx divided by g square have a look what is dy dx of f by g denominator g into derivative of f minus numerator f into derivative of g by denominator square okay so this is just algebra of functions is it differentiation right so derivative for the sum of functions derivative for the product of functions derivative for the division of functions okay if you wish to solve a simple problem related to this i will give you yeah uh let's so just have a look what is the derivative for sin x by x okay d by dx of sin x by x it is of the format division of functions f by g so now denominator x into derivative of sin x which is cos x right minus numerator sin x into derivative of this denominator 1 divided by x square so this is d by dx of sin x by x in this way we will answer different problems okay if you have d by dx of x into sin x then how to answer here we have product of two functions then first function x into derivative of sin x is cos x plus second function sin x into derivative of x is 1 so this is d by dx of x sin x that is d by dx of sin x by x so we solve problems in this way related to this algebra of differentiation okay have a look after this algebra of differentiation we need to think about chain rule chain rule means differentiation for the composition of functions okay i think you like many problems related to this okay once again i will give you yeah ah chain rule see derivative for the composition of functions okay it is easy to write d by dx of if you have a function of this format sin of e power x power 4 if you wish to find derivative for sin of e power x power 4 right this uh, see writing derivative for this type of functions is usually considered as chain rule or derivative for the composite functions okay just have a look here three functions are involved just as a composition x power 4 is one function e power x power 4 is the other function sin of e power x power 4 is one more function so how to write its derivative first of all you need to concentrate on this sign sign of something see for sin x the derivative is cos x for sin of something the derivative is cos so cos of e power x power 4 okay e, e power x power 4 uh, for sin it is clear then e power x power 4 see for e power something the derivative is e power that e power x is e power x so e power x power 4 the derivative is e power x power 4 itself into for x power 4 the derivative is 4 x cube finally cos of e power x power 4 into e power x power 4 into 4 x cube is the derivative with respect to x for the function sin of e power x power 4 okay likewise we solve many problems and after this discussion i will give you few more problems related to this chain rule and the composite functions okay have a look so so after this chain rule we need to think about logarithmic differentiation so that means to find the derivative of a function sometimes we apply logarithm on both sides and then we solve that okay so for suppose if you have a function y is equals to say x power sin x how to answer this so to answer this type of problems to find dy by dx if y is equals to x power sin x first we apply logarithm on both sides and then we will find dy by dx so what happens if you just have a look if you take log on both sides it is logarithm of y to the base e is equals to logarithm of x power sin x to the base e so now by the loss of logarithms sin sin x here and it becomes like this right logarithm of x power sin x to the base e can be written as sin x 
into log x to the base e, right? So now differentiate with respect to x. We are differentiating with respect to x, and this function is log y. So the derivative of log y is one by y into for y with respect to x is dy by dx is equals to on the right side sin x into log x base e. See first function sin x into the derivative of this log x base e is one by x plus second function log x base e into the derivative of first function sin x is cos x. Finally we need dy by dx. So send this y that side. So therefore dy by dx is simply nothing but sending y that side and that y is this x power sin x can be written as x power sin x into sin x by x plus log x to the base e into cos x. This is dy by dx. Okay. Just look at this function. See some exponential format is involved like x power sin x. Apply log on both sides. Differentiate with respect to x both sides and then mention dy by dx like this. Okay. See, this is the actual process. But for this type of functions, no need to proceed all these steps every time. Already I mentioned you, I gave you the formula for f of x power g of x. Okay. What is that? Just have a look. I will give you that also. Okay. And we also use this logarithmic differentiation not only for this x power sin x. If we have, see, product of functions like, uh, say, what I have to say. So, for suppose if you have a problem like this, see, y is equals to x minus 1 into x minus 2 into x minus 3 into x minus 4. See, for this type of problems, if you wish to find dy by dx, then again, just apply logarithm on both sides, undo differentiation, and at the end, mention dy by dx. Okay? See, logarithmic differentiation is useful to find dy by dx for these type of functions as well for these type of problems also. Okay? Have a look. Finally, for this logarithmic differentiation, see the direct formula what, as I said, d by dx of f of x power g of x is one of the useful idea to write the derivatives directly. So, it is nothing but f of x to the power g of x into g of x divided by f of x into the derivative of the base f dash of x plus logarithm of the base f of x into the derivative of the power z dash of x. Okay, This is the formula for the d by dx of f of x power g of x. You may use this one or you may go with the procedure just we discussed. Okay, Have a look. This is about logarithmic differentiation. After this logarithmic differentiation, we need to concentrate on parametric differentiation. Okay, What is this parametric differentiation? As we discussed, parametric differentiation means we need to find dy by dx at the end actually. But here, the, see the variables x and y are not directly connected. They are connected with some other parameter. You may call t or you may say theta like that. Okay. See, uh, for suppose if you have problems like this, if y is equals to some a t square and x is equals to say some 2 a t, so we need to find dy by dx. Here since y and x are not directly connected and they are connected with some other parameter t to find dy by dx, what we do? We will write this dy by dx as derivative of y with respect to t in numerator as well derivative of x with respect to t in denominator. Now, see y is equals to a t square we have just differentiate this y with respect to t. See since a is a constant for t square it is 2t so the numerator will become 2at coming to the denominator. Since it is x 2at while we are see, since we are differentiating with respect to t the derivative is simply 2a. So dy by dt is this 2at dx by dt is this 2a cancel this 2a and 2a you will get t so that is dy by dx. Okay. So this is something about the parametric differentiation. Okay. We won't find dy by dx directly. First we will find derivative of y with respect to the parameter and then we find uh, we will find derivative of x with respect to the parameter at the end we will mention dy by dx as derivative of y with respect to parameter divided by derivative of x with respect to the parameter. Okay. So have a look. This is something about parametric differentiation. After this we need to think about implicit differentiation. Okay. Have a look. All these are different simple methods related to the differentiation. So, 
after this parametric differentiation we need to think about implicit differentiation see coming to the implicit differentiation here x and y are connected directly but see it is not easy to mention y in terms of x okay x and y are completely mixed okay or suppose if you have a function like this uh, i will give you yeah e power xy plus x square okay see now this is the e power xy plus x square minus 2 is equals to 0 when you look at this problem x and y are connected but x and y are completely mixed right so now we need to find dy by dx see finding derivative from these type of relations and functions is mentioned is considered as implicit differentiation okay we are at this implicit differentiation so just differentiate it to find dy by dx see e power xy so for e power xy the derivative is e power xy into derivative of xy see what is the derivative of xy since it is a product first function x into derivative of second dy by dx plus y into derivative of first one which is 1 plus x square derivative of x square is 2x and minus 2 so 0 and this is equals to 0 from there we need to mention dy by dx since the question is to find dy by dx right so send this minus 2x this side and then send this e power xy this side so finally what we have yeah i will write directly dy by dx is equals to minus 2x into e power minus xy is it clear send 2x minus 2x e power xy e power minus xy okay after that you need to send this y also that side minus y and this is divided by x this is dy by dx so this is a very simple task actually okay finding dy by dx from these type of functions is usually considered as implicit differentiation okay so now we learn first principles method we revise this algebra of differentiation chain rule logarithmic differentiation parametric differentiation and implicit differentiation also still we have three more different ways methods of differentiation here to discuss and the next thing is what differentiation of one function with respect to the other okay actually it is a very simple task you just have a look okay uh, we did many problems related to that see differentiation of x with respect to x we know it right differentiation of x with respect to x is nothing but dx by dx that is equals to 1 first suppose if anybody asks you to mention differentiation of y with respect to x what you say we will mention it as dy by dx is it clear now see differentiation of say some sin x with respect to cos x see differentiation of sin x with respect to cos x is nothing but derivative of sin x with respect to the derivative of cos x we need to mention d sin x by d cos x and further to simplify it we will just divide the numerator and denominator with the dx so d sin x by dx divided by d cos x divided by dx from there it is easy for us to answer okay so usually differentiation of one function with respect to the other is just related to this idea okay have a look so there ends the differentiation of one function with respect to the other as i said i am just giving you few simple simple problems related to all these methods of differentiation already we did many problems level 2 level 3 and advanced problems also related to these concepts just as a part of reason i am just giving you the basic simple ideas here okay after that in the next class and the after this discussion i will give you few more examples few more problems to analyze all these ideas okay just think about it and then i will discuss about trigonometric substitution okay finding the de derivative using trigonometric substitution okay see next thing is trigonometric substitution see to find dy by dx for some functions it is easy to answer just by taking suitable trigonometric substitution i will give you some simple problem say y is equals to sin inverse of root 1 minus x square see if you wish to find dy by dx for this function okay there are many ways to answer this but how see uh, i am just giving you the example related to trigonometric substitution y is equals to sin inverse of root 1 minus x square so then we need to find dy by dx now just think about simply so which trigonometric function is suitable to replace x okay so what you say if you take x is equals to 
cos theta. Okay, just take x is equals to cos theta. If x is equals to cos theta, one minus x square is one minus cos square theta, and root one minus cos square theta is sine theta. So if x is equals to cos theta, we have sine inverse of sine theta, right? Sine inverse of sine theta invariance y is equal to theta. So but we took that x is equals to cos theta, and we have y is equals to theta. So finally, what is that theta? That theta is simply cos inverse x. What you say? Since we are taking x is equals to cos theta, since uh, we get that y is theta, so theta is cos inverse x. Our task is to find dy by dx. So now dy by dx is simply derivative for this cos inverse x. Nothing but minus one by root one minus x square. There ends the problem. Okay. Instead of using chain rule for this sine inverse root of one minus x square, this substitution. Taking x is equals to cos theta simplifies all our work, and directly dy by dx is the derivative of cos inverse x, which is minus one by root one minus x square. This is what trigonometric substitution. Okay. After all these methods of differentiation, a dang it is must to know about the way of finding derivatives for higher orders. Okay. What is meant by higher order derivatives? And I will give you simple example related to that. So. Next thing is higher order derivatives. So differentiation of y with respect to x is dy by dx. If you differentiate this dy by dx again with respect to x, it can be written as d by dx of dy by dx. This d by dx of dy by dx is notated as d square y by dx square. So this d square y by dx square is the second order derivative. Okay, and if you differentiate this d square y by dx square. Once again, with respect to x, that means d by dx of d square y by d x square, and it is nothing but d cube y by d x cube, and we 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 mention it as third order derivative. Likewise, it is easy to extend. Okay, see, the, which is nothing but the continuous differentiation. Given function, first derivative, again differentiate with respect to x, second derivative, again differentiate with respect to x, you will get third derivative like that. Okay, so you just have a look. I will give you one simple example also related to this. Yeah, as I said, simple one, right? So y is equals to say x minus two whole cube is y. That is the function. So first are the derivative, or you may say first derivative, which is nothing but dy by dx, and that is three into x minus two whole square. Is it clear? For x minus two whole cube, the derivative is three into x minus two whole square, and coming to the second order derivative. That means d square y by d x square we need to find. That d square y by d x square means derivative for this d y by d x once again with respect to x. D y by d x is this three into x minus two whole square. Differentiate it once again with respect to x. You will get it like this three into two times of x minus two and which is six times of x minus two. Once again, if you wish to find, if you wish to differentiate once again, it gives us third order derivative. d cube y by dx cube since it is 6 times of x minus 2 what is its differentiation 6 is a constant so write it separately for x minus 2 it is 1 so that is 6 so third order derivative is 6 if you differentiate one more time you will get fourth order derivative and that is the derivative of 6 with respect to x which is 0 okay likewise we will find first order derivative second order derivative and third order derivative okay this is something about Higher order derivatives. Okay, see we will solve different problems related to this higher order derivatives also. If the function is implicit, how to find higher order derivative? If the function is parametric, how to find higher order derivative? Okay, so see likewise also we need to solve different problems. Finally, this is differentiation. These are all different methods of differentiation. Okay, once again, first principles method just by the by the idea of limits. And the second thing is algebra of differentiation, sum, product, and division rule. Third thing is chain rule, differentiation for the composite functions, logarithmic differentiation. Usually we use this logarithmic differentiation for the functions of the format f of x power g of x, or for functions of which involves the products. Parametric differentiation, where y and x are not directly connected, connected with respect to some other parameter. implicit differentiation here y and x are directly connected but it is not easy to separate y and x okay they will mix up each other right coming to the differentiation of one function with respect to another see usually we will find derivative of y with respect to x instead of that 
Here in this method, we will find derivative of one function with respect to some other function, just like derivative of sin x with respect to cos x. Okay. Now, trigonometric substitution. For some problems, see, direct calculation of dy by dx is not easy. If you take a suitable trigonometric substitution, then it is very easy to answer. So, it comes under trigonometric substitution. At the end, higher order derivatives. That means, see, finding derivatives for repeatedly, continuous differentiation. d y by dx, d square y by dx square, d cube y by dx cube, like that. So, this is finally all about differentiation and methods of differentiation. Okay? Have a look.